you know, we have three million Afghan refugees on Pakistani soil. And these uh, Afghan refugees include various, uh, various people. It's not uh, always uh, easy to identify that so-and-so is a Taliban, and so-and-so is not a Taliban, so-and-so is a leader, so-and-so is not a leader. Uh, so the, we have had a fairly relaxed policy. Uh, we've been very tolerant with the Afghan refugees. Some are in the camps. 1.5 million Afghans in Pakistan are out of camps. So they roam around. And, and so I, I think it's probably not accurate to say the Taliban leaders live in Pakistan. They have plenty of space in Afghanistan. Over the last 10 years, they have controlled large chunks of territory in Afghanistan. And that's where their central shura has been located in the environments of Kandahar. I would say 70%, if not more, of the Afghan population lives in the rural areas. The conditions in the rural areas, unfortunately, have not changed at all in the last 20 years. Uh, with uh, the foreign intervention and the aid money and the NGOs and civil society, the plight of the rural poor in, in Afghanistan has not changed at all. It is still the same. And I think if you go back to Afghanistan and you will compare it to 1971, you will see there are some differences, but not much. The poverty is still there. The women are still in the same traditional mode. Their traditions cannot be changed by imposition from a foreign culture. Uh, and that, I think, is, is a fundamental issue and mistake that has been made to, to see that you can impose a, a foreign set of values on a traditional society like Afghanistan. I think Pakistan's influence in any case is limited. Uh, we know more better than others that you cannot force the Afghans to do anything. Uh, and I, I think uh, the experience of the last 40 years has indicated that nobody can actually, from outside, can dictate to the Afghans. So persuasion, yes. Uh, talks with them, consultations, yes. Uh, but we, you know, it's very difficult to persuade the Afghans. So it is our hope that the government which will be formed will be inclusive of all the various ethnicities and groups in Afghanistan so that it can actually bring peace to the country. And we believe that it is important for peace in the country that, that all groups uh, are represented uh, in, in a new government. But there are, you know, various, various political configurations also in Afghanistan. And so hopefully, uh, the government which will be formed will at least be broad-based and give representation to all of them. Uh, we, of course, are, cons are trying to form a consensus within the region and internationally uh, and to advise uh, the Taliban to, to adhere to what they have said. They have said that they will form an inclusive government, so we are, we are urging them to do so. 